Good evening. As uh, Pastor Jeff said, I'm uh, Alvin Claude, and uh, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak to you this afternoon. Now, I don't often talk about myself very often. Actually, I never talk about myself. <laughs> but I always talk about Jesus. So Amen. forgive me if I start preaching a little bit along the way because that's what I do. <laughs> Glory be to God. So as um, uh, Brother Jeff said, that uh, <clears throat> I'm the son of a sharecropper. I'm the seventh of nine children. And uh, I say we grew up on a farm, and I definitely learned uh, work ethic. I mean, we worked from sun up until sundown. You know, and I guess at the time, you know, we were poor. We didn't have a lot. But at that time, I didn't know I was poor. I mean, you know, we grew a lot of our food. We had food to eat and had a roof over our head. And, we didn't want for anything, and we were happy, you know. And, and like I say, we grew up, and then I guess <clears throat> around the time that I was 13 years old, my dad passed away. And my mom had never worked except in the home. I guess taking care of nine children is definitely a job. <laughs> Amen. So after my dad passed away, we left the farm and we moved to the city. And my mom, again, never having worked outside of the home, so she took a job as a domestic, took care of somebody else's home, and she worked and put us through school. So after I uh, graduated from high school, I uh, uh, went to college for a year. I was an engineering student. So I completed my first year in college, and my funds were kind of short, so I decided to stay out for a semester and work. So during the time that I was out of school, I lost my deferment. This was during the Vietnam War, and I was drafted by the Army. Well, I didn't even know I had been drafted. So the Air Force recruiter called me up and said, you've been drafted by the Army, so you want to join the Air Force? Okay, sounds like a pretty good deal to me. So I went down and I took the test and I um, <clears throat> passed the test. And so I went ahead and I enlisted in the Air Force at the time I was 19 years old. So I went in the Air Force and they trained me to be an aircraft technician. And then they, after I got out of uh, training school, I went to Thailand. <clears throat> This was during the Vietnam War. And uh, I was stationed in Thailand. I worked on fighter aircraft. And I was there doing Operation Linebacker when they were flying the B-52s over North Vietnam. And um, we uh, flew escorts for the bombers. And we had this stuff we call shaft. It was little pieces of aluminum foil and we <clears throat> rolled it up in between pieces of plastic inside a pot, and we put it on the fighters, and they went in, and they flew over the radar sites, and they dropped all of these pieces of aluminum foil to confuse the radar so they couldn't shoot down our bombers. And I was there for a year, and then after that, I came back to the States, and I was stationed in South Carolina. And that was in 1973, and then in 1974, I got married. Guess that was a change in my life. And, you know, as young couples, things started out pretty well, and all was doing good. And then in 1974, my enlistment in the Air Force was up. So I had recently been married. And during that time, the, <clears throat> the country was in the midst of a recession. So the Air Force said that since I was trained as an aircraft technician, say, we'll give you $5,000 if you re-enlist. Well, that was a lot of money back then. 
And then newly married, says, okay, I'll take the five grand and re-up. <laughs> Glory be to God. So then after I re-enlisted in um, 1980, they sent me back overseas again, and I was stationed in Germany. And things were going pretty good for a while, and then that's when problems started to happen. I had some health issues. I had... Uh, would have chest pains and times I felt fearful and all kinds of issues and then I started having some marital issues and my life just started falling down around me and I guess one of the other things you know back again as a child growing up my mother used to read the Bible to us and she also took us to Sunday school. Well, back then, you know, in the church, we had church, but we only had church once a month. Okay. And, you know, Sunday school was every Sunday, so we went to Sunday school and we went to church once a month, you know. And then, I guess, when I got to be about 14, I stopped going to church. I guess I figured I knew everything then. I want to go out and do my own thing, you know. But yet that the teachings that my mother had given me from the Bible and kind of being brought up in the church. And then when I got to Germany and all of these problems start happening in my life, you know, as the passage says, that if you train up a child in the way they should go, is that when they're older, they won't depart from it. So I began to remember those things that I had been taught as a child. And then... I guess at that time I was about 30 years old and I uh, went back to church and gave my life to Christ. Amen. Amen. And so I finished out my term in Germany and then I came back and they sent me to Texas. And after we had <clears throat> been there for about a year, my first son was born. And then about two months, after my son was born, my wife was stricken with multiple sclerosis, and she wasn't able to walk. And she spent the <clears throat> next nine months in the hospital and in nursing home. And then I was struggling with raising an infant by myself, which was a considerable challenge. So then, <clears throat> after the end of nine months, the Air Force gave me a um, reassignment to Virginia, where her family was, and my family was there also. And then for the next six years, I took care of my wife and my infant son while working full time in the Air Force. And needless to say, that was a tremendous challenge. And I remember I was like putting in 20 hour days, you know, from where we lived at to where the base was about 30 miles. So I had an hour commute each day. And then, you know, being in the Air Force is not like being on a regular job. I mean, like, I suppose the get off at four o'clock. But if I had an airplane down or a piece of equipment down, you stayed there till you got it up. And sometimes I wouldn't get home till five or six o'clock in the evening. And then I would go in and make dinner for my wife and son. And by this time, my son was in kindergarten and then I would help him with his homework. And then I would put her to bed. And then about midnight, I would get around for me getting to bed. <clears throat> but I remember is that after I finished doing everything, like I say, usually around midnight, I would take time to read my Bible, usually for about a half an hour every night. Because like I can say the going was pretty tough, but I began to seek out a deeper relationship with God. And I would read that Bible for 30 minutes, and then I would go to bed and sleep for about three or four hours, and then I would get up and start my day again. And then sometimes I would get up in the morning, 
and I would be so tired, I would sit there on the side of the bed for maybe 10 or 15 minutes just to get up enough strength to go in the bathroom to start getting ready for work. And after I got dressed, I would have to get my wife dressed and take care of all of her needs, and then I would head out to work. And like I say, life was a struggle, but I never lost hope, never became discouraged, just kept on going. And then in 1988, my second son was born. So now I got two kids to take care of. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I just still kept on believing in God, kept on reading that word and reaching out to him. And he kept me going. But it was a tremendous struggle. But I never lost hope. And then in 1990, my wife passed away. And my oldest son was seven and my youngest son was two. So I had a seven-year-old and a two-year-old to raise by myself. But I kept hanging in there, kept on keeping the faith and kept on believing in God and kept going to church and studying in that word. I always kept coming back to that word because that was the thing that sustained me, kept me going. So I took care of my boys for two years, and then I, I married again. So that kind of made things a little bit easier. But as I continued to walk by faith and continued to just seek out the power of God, and I remember back when I had first came back to the church, and I remember being in... Uh, my uh, Sunday school class, and I remember asking, well, the class and the teacher, as we would study the scriptures and we would see the, the miracles and the things that God had done in the Old Testament and the, the things that Jesus had done in the New Testament. And I remember asking, like, why don't we see the manifestations of the power of God today as we saw in Bible times? And nobody really gave me a good answer. So I began to seek it for myself. And I began to pray and ask God. And as I began to read the scriptures, and the scripture says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He says that I'm God and I change not. So I began to seek the manifestations of those blessings in my life. And I remember the words of Jesus where he says that all things are possible if you only believe. Mm -hmm. And I began to think about that then. And what does it really mean to believe? So Jesus also said that if you believe on me, the works that I do, you can do them too. So I say, Lord, if I believe on you and I know that you can't lie, then there must be something wrong with my believing. <laughs> so as I began to search the scriptures, and the Bible says, see, you can believe in your head, but in order to do what he does, you got to believe it in your heart. And you can't believe it in your heart all by yourself. So that's why the scripture says that it's God that worketh in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So in order for us to believe in our heart, we have to allow him to come in to purge our hearts of that unbelief. And as Jeff and I were talking about before we started here, that how Jesus often referred to the kingdom of heaven is like planting a seed into the ground. He says that the kingdom of heaven is though a man cast a seed into the ground and he goes to bed night and day and it grows up and bears fruit, but he don't know how. So as I see that believing is a journey, as the Apostle Paul says that 
I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation <coughs> to everyone that believeth. There is that belief again. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So as I continue that journey to continue to live by faith and to continue to grow and develop in his word, and as I uh, look back over the rest of my life, I've seen the manifestations of the power of God in my life. And as I had said earlier, I did have those health issues. And I remember back when, for no reason at all, my heart rate would start to beat really, really fast. I could hear it pounding against my chest. And I remember I would get on the phone and call my mother and she would pray for me and kind of calm me down. And I still had the problems with chest pains. I would have tightness in my chest and then I would get fearful and that would make it tighten up much more. And I would end up going to the hospital and they would put me in intensive care for three days and hook me up and put me on all of these monitors, you know. And actually, when my dad passed away, he died from heart trouble. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you go in the hospital, they always want to know your family history. And I remember I was in the Naval Hospital in Portsmouth, Virginia. And the doctor came into my room, and he had a bunch of interns. These were students with him. And he came, and he listened to my heart, and he told me that I had a heart murmur. And all of the students, they came and they listened and they said, yep, you got a heart murmur. But I just began to believe God, you know, and they basically told me that your dad had heart disease and you got it too, you know, and he passed away at 48 years old. But I began to stand on the word of God and I remember that scripture says that he took my infirmities and he carried 